Today, Secretary of, or U.S. Secretary of State uh, John Kerry met with uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Net Netanyahu three times in an attempt to try to put peace talks back on track. In an article by the Gatestone Institute uh, of International Policy Council, they are reporting that the Palestinians want a Geneva-type accord against Israel. And this is what I believe the direction of uh, the peace talks are actually going to go. But let me go ahead and read the article. It says, The Geneva Accord and Washington's failed policies in Egypt and other Muslim countries have taught the Palestinians that it would be better to wait until the U.S. completely loses its influence so that other players such as Russia, China, and the EU will step in and impose a solution on Israel. The way the uh, Palestinian Authority sees it, if it worked with Iran, why shouldn't it work also with Israel? And frankly, I believe this is exactly the direction, in fact, I've been saying this for years, this is exactly the direction I think will finally bring peace to the Middle East. Now, certainly we're waiting on the rapture of the church to take place and the rise of the Antichrist. He's actually the one who will bring this peace. But I think that the Geneva-type agreement that forced Iran to come to the table with the United States in the uh, P5 plus one uh, is going to eventually come and, and uh, haunt uh, Israel. But going on with the articles, the Geneva Agreement between Iran and the six big powers appears to have been or to have had a negative impact on the current U.S. sponsored Israeli Palestinian peace talks. The Palestinians see the agreement as an opportunity to achieve their demands through international pressure and not direct uh, negotiations with Israel. They are also very happy to see growing tensions between the U.S. administration and the Israeli government over a series of issues, including the Geneva deal. Palestinian spokeswoman Hanan Ashwari was quick to demand that the U.S. and the rest of the international community treat Israel the same way they treated Iran. She called on the international community to impose sanctions on Israel and hold it accountable with the same uh, will that led to an uh, end of uh, to Iran's nuclear plan. And you may not know this, but I've said this a number, number of times, that the Iranian plan between the United States and Iran uh, really will take several years and will be phased in. I believe that's exactly what's going to happen with the creation of a Palestinian state and peace between Israel and the Palestinians, and w which will be caps, capped off with a splitting of Israel right down the middle, one side for uh, Israel to have their capital, the other side for uh, the Palestinians to have their capital. But going on again, it says, She called on the international community to impose sanctions on Israel and hold it accountable in the, with the same will that led to the end of Iran's nuclear plan. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to get the international community to put pressure upon the United States to bring about sanctions that forced Iran back to the table. And they're trying to do the same thing with Israel. The Palestinian Authority, which has welcomed the accord, is now hoping that the international community will force Israel to comply with all its demands, above all, a full withdrawal to the pre-1967 lines. And as you can see, this is pretty much a one-sided uh, situation where the Palestinians want to force Israel to uh, comply with all their demands, but uh, they don't want to give anything away themselves. As Nabal Abu Rudina, a spokesman for Palestinian Authority, President Mahmoud Abbas explained, the international efforts that uh, succeeded in Geneva provide an opportunity for uh, reviving the role of the Palestinian, or, I'm sorry, of the quartet, which is the U.S., EU, UN, or Russia, uh, and Russia, in ending the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Abu Rudina and other P uh, PA officials say they are encouraged by the deal with Iran because it would isolate Israel in the international arena and force it to make concessions to the Palestinians. According to Erekat, the international community should treat Israel the same way it dealt with Iran. The first step should uh, be to stop dealing with Israel as a state above the law and to find ways to hold it accountable, he added. What the PA is actually saying is that there is no need to continue with futile peace talks when there is a chance that the U.S. and other big uh, powers could impose a solution on Israel. The way the uh, PA sees it, if it worked with Iran, why shouldn't it work also with Israel? And frankly, I do see it, it moving in this direction. And I do see the world heading at full speed into 
uh, some type of sanctions based punishment for Israel for not uh, turning over the West Bank and uh, uh, half of Jerusalem to the Palestinians. And if you're looking for a reason or something to uh, hang your hat on as far as uh, if we're living in the end times, and this is it. You're not going to find it in Egypt. You're not going to find it in Syria. You're not going to find it in Israel's neighbors. You know, the Bible said uh, that Israel would uh, become a nation and a generation would not pass before the Lord would return uh, for his second coming. But seven years before that, a peace accord would be agreed upon in which Israel would uh, make peace with many. But getting back to the article, it says, uh, Some Palestinians see the Iranian agreement as a sign of the regression of the U.S. administration's influence in the Middle East. They believe that now, as the U.S. role in the region has been weakened as a result of the accord, the time has come to pave the way for other powers to intervene in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And the Bible is clear that the intervening power that will come to uh, the forefront will be the European Union, which is found in Daniel 9, 25 through 27. And I believe the time is ripe where the United States is going, not so much uh, is going to fade away, but they're going to allow others. They're still going to be the dominant power in the world. Nobody has got the weapons nor the military know-how that the United States has, and that will be that'll go right into the uh, tribulation period as well. You know, a lot of people think the United States is going to fade away at some point, but that is simply not going to happen. Whether or not uh, one quarter or one half or whatever the case may be, I don't expect one half. I expect probably about 80 to 90 million people in the United States to be raptured out of 300 million. So that's still going to leave them with the United States with somewhere around 225 million, which is basically what we had uh, a population in the United States about oh, 15, 20 years ago. And you need to remember that just because the United States uh, has a massive loss of population uh, due to the rapture, that's not the, the nukes aren't going anywhere. Our military know-how isn't going anywhere. We will still be the most powerful country in the world. And that probably will also go for our financial uh, situation as well. Yeah, there's going to be some bumps in the road because of that. But I think there's going to be some bumps in the road for every nation as far as their economic status. I do look for a real problem to occur once the rapture takes place with a general fear that will grip this world. But I think the United, but I think that the Antichrist will come on the scene quick enough, and he will bring about a strong delusion, and this world will get back to normal uh, in a very short amount of time. But don't look for the United States to lose its position as the most powerful uh, nuclear-armed uh, country in the world. We we still have we'll still have the best weapons in the world, and we will still be the most powerful country in the world. Now, I do believe at some point in time during the tribulation period that the United States will be revealed as Mystery Babylon. And even though we are the most powerful, or I should say the United States is the most powerful country in the world, I believe that God will allow Satan to destroy the United States. By what means, I have no idea, but I'm sure it will be a supernatural means. And that is described uh, uh, quite well in Revelation 17 and 18. And finally, with this article, it says, The Palestinians are now convinced that, that uh, under uh, pe President Barack Obama, the U.S. role in the, in the region is continually receding. That is why they do not believe that the uh, U.S.-sponsored peace talks with Israel will produce any results. And, and simply the reason they're not going to put any effort into trying to make them become a reality. The Geneva Accord and Washington's failed policies in Egypt and other Muslim countries have taught the Palestinians that it would be better to wait until the U.S. completely loses its influence uh, so that other players, such as Russia, China, and the EU, will step into uh, into uh, impose a solution on Israel. And as I said, that's exactly what the Bible has said would happen. And of those three, the, U the European Union will be the one who will step forward and will finally make this peace accord come true. And frankly, I believe that's the next thing after the rapture of the church on God's prophetic ca calendar. I don't look for any major wars to take place uh, before the rapture of the church. Yeah, there may be some skirmishes. I mean, uh, every once in a while there's uh, Hamas or Hezbollah. They do uh, raise their heads a bit. 
But I don't foresee any major war such as between Egypt or uh, Israel or Syria or Israel or Israel's neighbors or anything of that nature. And I don't look for the Battle of Gog and Magog to come down upon Israel either until after the uh, peace accord is signed. I know that's not what a lot of people want to hear, but the bottom line is, is that I have to speak the truth. And you know what? My track record is pretty good when it comes to telling the truth. I don't usually uh, sway uh, and, and try to say things just, be, just to bring, uh, bring about a crowd or to uh, build my viewership. If, you're gonna come, if you come to my website, you're going to get the truth, whether you think it's prophetically boring or not. But you got to remember, when everyone else was saying one thing, I was saying the other. And so far, my track record has been pretty good. So I'll stick with what I'm doing over what others are doing at this point in time. And as always, I'd like to conclude with a word of salvation. I know that uh, you hear it on a regular basis for me. But the bottom line is, is that if you do not know the Lord as Savior, you do need to make that decision for Christ. He died for you. He wants you to go to heaven. But he also wants you to live for him. So I would encourage you that if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, that today is the day of salvation. Uh, I wouldn't put it off because once you die, there's no coming back. You're either going to spend your, your eternity in heaven or you're going to spend it in hell. And if you don't know Jesus as Savior, you're not going to spend it in heaven and all. So make that decision today before it's everlasting too late. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.